Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itasaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. Phil, our first idea is assigned to Grant Prideco, and it's a method for installing an offshore wind turbine and a substructure. And this idea is rather unique in offshore wind in that it has a substructure in built-in containers that can be transported relatively easily. And so, it, and the way it's described is like a, a vertical garage when the, when the tower sections arrive at its destination. Once on site, the tower is raised straight up from its container using a winch. And this eliminates a, a need for some of the installation vessels, which are so expensive and what everybody's trying to get away from right now. And you can't find them. Uh, so there's a, a number of really interesting concepts that reduce that, and this is one of them. So it, it lets the uh, simple ships install towers and install the nacelles and blades um, much closer uh, at sea level before a final tower lift is done. So it does change the complexity of offshore wind dramatically. I haven't seen this implemented yet but it seems like it will be soon. Well, it, it very well could be, considering the uh, push towards larger uh, turbine sizes offshore and, uh, as you mentioned, the desire to you know eliminate a lot of extra um, reliance on large crane vessels uh, and installation vessels. But this, the idea itself, you mentioned it's it's uh, currently assigned to Grand Pride Co., but it was originally conceived by National Oil Well Varco, NOV, um, that's actually got a pretty lengthy history at this point, uh, obviously in oil and gas, but also in offshore wind, uh, including installation vessel um, involvement and... Um, you know concepts like this. They've they've been patenting uh, ideas for for uh, good on ten years now. And what is kind of interesting and unique about this, as you mentioned, is imagine you know a, a turbine you know where th like the blades are all kind of folded down. Um, the upper section of the tower is kind of folded down in and is telescoped down inside the lower sections of, of the tower and even down into, you know, a portion of the transition piece and monopile. Um, and basically what they're saying is you can put the monopile, um, you know, in place and then take this thing out, pick it and plop it down and then just have like this internal winch system to, to pluck out all the, um, you know, different bits and pieces of, of the turbine inside, you would still have to do a nacelle pick. Um, so I think it's, you know, maybe not quite as a cost and time efficient as, as everyone might think, but it is fewer um, sorties by the, the vessels themselves carrying and ferrying, um, you know, components from port to project site. Um, so that is something that, that could prove to be useful in the future. And, and we'll see, you know, if, if they're going to, if NOV is going to, you know, um, continue to push this out and, and, um, you know, drive this, uh, technology into, uh, the, the state of commercial use. Well, our second idea comes from Ellen Windpower. And again, this patent and this idea seems like something that will be used or if it's, if it hasn't already, will be used relatively shortly. And this idea is about reducing some of the vibrations from stationary wind blades. And offshore in particular, as you're assembling a turbine before it's been turned on and operating, it's just sitting there. There could be a lot of stress on the turbine itself and from vibration on the blades just sitting into the wind. And what this system from LM does is it just kind of wraps onto the blade and reduces that vibration dramatically. So all the vortex-induced vibration uh, that can happen at 90-degree angles and some stall-induced vibration that happens, uh, it reduces it dramatically. And then when you're ready to turn the turbine on, you pull this device off, and then you can get rolling. So it's for that sort of transitory period 
uh, before commissioning when the turbine is just not operating. And we have seen a number of blade problems because of this. And this patent was applied to what in 2022. And it makes you think that uh, LM has been really behind the scenes trying to fix a problem that they've seen on the engineering side for a little while, Phil. Yeah, and and what's kind of fascinating about all that is when when they've originally conceived of this was probably back sometime in, in 2021 if they got around to kind of filing for their patent in 2022. Uh, so they've they've been kind of noodling on this for almost, you know, three years. And considering the fact that, you know, some of their blades have had issues uh, during installation, again, whether it, the root cause of it was down to a manufacturing defect or whatever, um, what shook the blade apart and caused it to, to fray and, and split from the turbine was this vortex-induced oscillations, um, you know, that happened when the turbine was in park position while they were still installing and commissioning, you know, uh, adjacent turbines or or that turbine. And so it, one wonders, you know, because this is kind of, um, uh, I'll call it maybe a bit more of an offbeat idea in, in terms of you wouldn't have necessarily thought to use a, a solution like this. Um, but this is akin to um, if you've seen companies that have wrapped the, a little spiral thing on the top of a wind turbine tower, particularly offshore, um, when they're going to install it, it's to, to accomplish almost exactly the same thing. It's to preclude um, the buildup of a vortex-induced oscillation on the tower. Um, so why a concept like this wasn't being used is um, kind of a question I've got. Uh, <laughs> but... The the reality of it is at least they're they're thinking along these lines and they have these solutions in their back pocket. I I actually hope that solutions like this, um, you know, are are brought to bear because it's certainly a lot more expensive for for however much a system like this would cost um, to have and the the pain in the butt that it might be to, to have to you know put it on and take it off every time you're doing um, you know a, a turbine commissioning. It certainly costs a lot less than having to replace, uh, you know, blades and and slow down or stop, you know, commissioning of a of an offshore wind project, which we've now seen what the uh, commercial impact of that can be, um, substantially more expensive than, you know, implementing this little kind of in, inflatable system that that wraps around the blade and and helps, um, you know, create a shape that's going to deflect a lot more of the. Uh, those vortex-induced oscillations. Our last idea comes from Catherine Rutherford. And if you've ever seen the John Wick movie series, uh, there's a lot of ballistic armor there. And you never see it slow down John Wick. He can do all kinds of karate moves and sword play and while firing a weapon. And the, the body armor moves with him, which always seems like an impossibility. However... Uh, Catherine Rutherford has come up with this ballistic resistant body covering where it does maintain mobility. And the key features include a torso portion with front and black plates that securely connect and a, a, an innovative cup shaped groin section with leg openings and a detachable neck guard. Now, this is the only place I would see this used, Phil, is it's some sort of assass uh, assassin group like a John Wick group. Um, this is the only place I. I would even imagine this being used, which makes me wonder where the idea came from. Uh, did it come straight from Hollywood? Maybe it did. But it, it, if it does work, there's other applications for this for sure. Alan, given the popularity of uh, the the film The Day of the Jackal right now, considering they, they just kind of redid a, uh, a TV series about it, which is actually not that bad, by the way. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's where they were going with it. The reason I... I wanted to throw this in was the the general concept of you know this is kind of play it's almost like plate armor you know when when we have like kevlar body armor today uh, that can deform and deflect um the fact that they have introduced this concept that it's kind of a hybrid between like plate armor and and kevlar uh it's a bit of a it's a bit of an odd um you know an odd choice to me uh, and, and, you know, on top of it, the, the picture, uh, that they've included in the patent just looks a bit amusing. 
um, you know, as as many of the, uh, the talented artists, though they are, uh, they sometimes come up with some uh, uh, some very strange looking <laughs> ideas and inventions and ways of expressing them. So I, I don't know this one, you know, if if people are going to want, uh, you know, or frankly need, uh, you know, plate armor and a cod piece, then it sounds like this is this is the right idea for you. Uh, but I can't imagine too many people in today's day and age that are that are going to need it. 